How you doing, Mr. DJ? Back on my 60s channel. Going to indulge myself on this one. Billboard's Hot 100, August 5th, 1967. One of my favorite records off this Hot 100. It is at number 34. And uh, let me let me crack, <clears throat> let me bring that up for you. At number 34, up 12 from 46. No surprise, the monkey. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys with words. I love that song, Mickey Dolenz. Mickey Dolenz, probably one of the most underrated singers of the 60s i mean he now some of the monkey songs were was handled by uh davy jones <laughs> i can't well the british guy i can't remember his name right now he did the lead vocals on daydream believer but mickey dolenz i mean he just a powerful just an energetic I don't want to say soulful. I mean, when he does the song She by the Monkees, he pours his heart out into that song. You'd think this guy, he is just, he's at the end of his, at the end of his rope on that record. And he sang lead on Pleasant Valley Sunday. He sings lead on this record by words. And it sounds, he, 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 he does it with such sincerity, you think the guy's really hurt as he sings this record, Words, by the Monkees. The album is Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, uh, Jones, I think it's Jones Limited. It's the fourth album by the Monkees. And let me make sure I got that name right. I got it pulled up. Jones Limited by the Monkees. Definitely sounds psychedelic. The Age of Aquarius, my friend. Summer of 1967. The Summer of Love. Now, here's the interesting thing about this album. I just discovered this. And I can't pronounce this word. There are like five or six different ways of pronouncing this word. There was an instrument that started to get popular in the late 60s, particularly in the early 70s. It was called the it's M O O G, Mook. I'll just call it Mook. <laughs> I can't think of a better way right now. The Mook synthesizer. There were about 20 of them that was initially produced. Mickey Dolenz bought one of those 20. He bought one. He brought it into the recording studio and he played it for the rest of the band. He owned a MOOC, one of the early MOOC synthesizers that was used by the Beatles. It was used by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. They used a form, a MOOC modular uh, synthesizer. They used it in Lucky Man, which came out probably in England in 1970, but here in the States it was popular back in, in the spring of 1971. Stevie Wonder used a MOOC synthesizer. I, I like to pronounce it as Mooj. M O G M M O O G. Can I pronounce it as Mooj? Like Rouge? I guess the G is silent in there. It was originally a Dutch word. But anyway, Stevie Wonder, he used that instrument on Inner Visions and fulfilling this first finale or something like that, an album that came out in 1974. But uh, this song, by the way, was written by Tommy Boyce and Bobby Hart. They were on the road back in 1967. And just a few months, they had one. They had their biggest hit. I wonder what she's doing tonight. Late '67, early '68. Voice and heart. Well, anyway, let me. By the way, the MOOC, It was play. It was demonstrated at the Monterey Pop Festival, summer '67. But it got really popular. It achieved its first commercial success. The MOOC synthesizer, or the MOOC synthesizer. Wendy Carlos had put out an album in 1968 called Switch On Bach. It was classical music played by the Mook. She played the Mook or the Mooj and was a big selling album in the late 60s. Switch On Bond by Wendy Carlos. Anyway, let's go to this album. This is real. This is a trippy album. Uh, we got one by Harry Nelson called Cuddly Toy on this album and Pleasant Valley Sunday which was written by Jerry Goffin and Carol King's on here. Daily Nightly by written by Michael Nesmith Dolan's played the Moog on that record, Daily Nightly. Star Collector by Jerry Goffin and Carol King. Hey, you know, that's groovy, baby. That is <laughs> Incense and Peppermints right there. She Hangs Out by Jeff Berry's on here. Uh, getting a little bubble gum and Love is Only Sleeping by the legendary songwriting team of Barry Mann and Cynthia, Cynthia Weil. They wrote You Lost That Love and Feeling. So, bottom line major talent in songwriting and production going to this album. The Monkees played some of their instruments on this album too, particularly Michael Nesmith on his guitar, although they did use some session musicians on this album. Well, it is Words by the Monkees. Let's go to this record. Uh, on Billboard's Hot 100 of August 5th, 1967, it peaked at number 11. It was on Billboard's Hot 100 for nine weeks. Words by the Monkees.